Welcome. This is the first event of the ESRC funded uh, seminar series, The Future of Our Food. There's quite a large team involved with this uh, project. Uh, there's, a, there's an Edinburgh team. Antonio, where are you? I'm here. Yeah, uh, and, uh, Antonio is, is uh, you know, the, uh, a Scot um, from Brazil. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> he, he's, um, um, he's organizing the event there in, uh, in, in January or, or, or February. There's uh, Jessica Paddock, where are you? There, there. Uh, <coughs> who, is, uh, from, uh, who was based in Cardiff, now based in Manchester. So there's a Cardiff team, also together with uh, Terry Marston, who unfortunately can't be here. <coughs> But the next event, already in, in about three weeks' time, uh, will be uh, in Cardiff. And maybe later on, uh, Jess can tell us a little bit about it. There's quite a large team at City University in London with, with Tim Lang. And Victoria Schoen is around as well. And there, there's also Nadia and, and, and Mary, also part of that team. Uh, and they've got a wonderful food uh, policy centre at City, who's also very much uh, part of, of, of this uh, project. And um, Tim will tell us a little bit about um, the, the, uh, the FRC, the Food Research Collaboration, um, uh, in, in, in just a minute. And um, I should mention the Essex team. Uh, I'm the director of the Essex Sustainability Institute, which is an interdisciplinary uh, research institute at the University of Essex. Uh, uh, our team working on this project is uh, Zareen Barucha, right in the back, and uh, Dave Watson, up front, who you've received emails from, um, and various other ESI members uh, are involved as well. I'd like to thank everyone who's kind of contributed to organizing this uh, event. It's, it's yeah, quite a lot of coordination is always uh, required. Um, thank you also to Jane for looking after our keynote speaker who came in from Brazil, and I will introduce Salichi in just, just a minute. I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. It's always the danger of thanking everyone. You will always forget somebody. I'd really like to thank the Minaris team as well. They're really great. You can smell the food already, yeah? <laughs> Getting slightly hungry already, so it's just uh, past 10. That's a bit too early. But we had a local food uh, event here. We had a research project going on on local food. And um, it was probably one of the best sort of professional catering I've, I've, I've had. Uh, sorry, I, I shouldn't really uh, <laughs> promise, over-promise, before lunch, so you, you, will, you, will, um, uh, you will judge for yourself. Okay. The future of our food. It's, a, it's in a bit of a mess, isn't it? Um, that's why we really wanted to organize this seminar series. Um, one starting point to think about the mess we are in is to think about recent news um, items such as you know, the, 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 the fall from grace of our beloved Tesco supermarket chain. It's been in the news for, for weeks, hasn't it? And you know, on the t Today program, almost on a daily basis, you have experts on the retail industry coming in saying, yeah, Oh yeah, you know, Aldi and Lidl coming in and, and changing the marketplace and isn't it bad that Tesco's now losing market share and, and the fall of profit and then of course there's an accounting scandal involved and um, you, know, you hear all of that from an economic business point of view. Very rarely you get somebody coming in and actually talking about the human, the social, and as well as the environmental cost of the food distribution, the food retail system that we um, uh, have in this country. Uh, and, and Tesco is the most dominating uh, uh, supermarket in this country with, with uh, 30 plus market share. You know, once upon a time, 
um, you know, every third or fourth, fourth pound spent in this country in, in, in supermarkets was spent in, in Tesco's, right? Um, and I always get very angry that you, know, you never hear about the people who enable this so-called so success. And what is actually success? You know, is it the success of the shareholders and the chief executives who, who, who uh, earn millions and millions of pounds? Uh, or or you know, how do we account for success? How do we measure success? Um, the issue of work and labor is really at the heart of that very question. Here in the east of England, we have a huge amount of immigrant labor, legal and illegal, coming from across Europe and uh, other parts of the world to work in, uh, well, on the land, in, uh, on fruit farms. We have large, you know, larger than average fields here in the east of uh, uh, England. Sometimes it's kind of been called the, bre the, the, the bread basket and sort of getting towards American style kind of agriculture, larger fields than you have in many other parts in, in, uh, in the UK, um, with a lot of labor and work required. And, and these, um, we don't hear much about the labor conditions of, of these workers. Often, when you do hear about it, uh, uh, you know, brave researchers, um, uh, uh, you know, civil society organizations going in and trying to uh, find out what are the labor and work conditions, then you, you see uh, si signs of bonded labor, slavery type conditions. Because if you're illegal, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, you have nowhere to go. Um, and you're very much dependent on who provides you with shelter and a bit of uh, income and, and, and work. So there are a lot of examples of that going on in, in the east of England. Um, but obviously, you don't hear much about that on the Today programme and other uh, mainstream news uh, uh, organisations. Uh, <clears throat> so these are the very local effects of, of our uh, food system. If you try to travel overseas, and later on we will hear about Brazil, um, you know, we also realise that our food system, the way it's organised in this country um, at the moment, has global implications. You know, we have flowers being flown in from Kenya on a daily basis, with obviously work and labour implications uh, on, on Kenyan farms. We have fresh fruit flown in from Brazil. We will hear our keynote speakers speak about that. We have, uh, you know, if, if, I, if I even go to my local co-op, uh, at this time of year, I will get blueberries flown in from Peru, right? So these are the global implications of the food system. But, you know, very rarely you get a view that connects these value and commodity chains and kind of really gives us a a broad and holistic view of how this all comes together and how it is functioning, but all, all, you know, often dysfunctioning. You know, who wins, who loses, where does the value go? And often it is the Tesco shareholder where the value goes most. Okay. So these are the kind of issues that we want to problematize today. Um, we will have other seminars focusing on other topics uh, in relationship to, to the food system and its uh, broader sustainability. Uh, I'd like to ask Tim, Professor Tim Lang, to talk just for two or three minutes about the food research collaboration because a key aim of this seminar series, as well as um, the, the, the wonderful events that the city team is putting together uh, in London, is really to, to say, well, academic research is not enough, right? We need a broader coalition of, of people from academia and all aspects of civil society to kind of work together on these kind of issues. Tim, could you say a few? The food research collaboration uh, came out of a lot of discussions with a lot of people, some in this room, um, and Stefan summarised it really. It was a feeling that 
In Britain, we've got really fabulous academic work on food. It's grown over the last 40 years. So really beautiful and wonderful, for me, very moving rebirth of critical intelligence about the food system and what's happening. And we've also got, actually, I think, arguably, the most vibrant civil society movement on food. I mean, it's when you go outside Britain, and look back in, and you look through other people's eyes, you see this extraordinary process that's happened over the last 30 years, which I always think is the legacy of Mrs. Thatcher, because she basically, there was no point of lobbying anyone, you know. So basically, civil society had to create, the space was created. Um, but the Food Research Collaboration was an idea that came out of discussions between us at City and many academic friends around the country and elsewhere. And talking with funders, actually, with foundations. To get a long story short, there was a feeling that over the last 30 years, foundations have poured money into projects in civil society who suffer from projectitis. Short term, money goes in, money goes out, and then the experience dissipates. Uh, but nonetheless, something important has grown. And that we need to maybe cross-fertilize more. There aren't very many academics who are committed to working with civil society. Basically, academics are pimps. We'll run wherever the money goes. I can say that. I'm a professor. My career is going nowhere. They're, they're bald. As my friend Mike Jacobson said to me 25 years ago, you can buy an American professor. They're very cheap, Tim. They cost $500. Um, actually, I think it's one of the wisest things that I've ever been told. Uh, basically, academics follow the money. And so, essentially, we went and got some money from the Esme Fairbairn Foundation. After about five years of discussing, with me saying, I don't want the money, actually, I want the movement. And they said, no, fund it. You've got to put money into this. And so they gave us a large amount of money, uh, which employs Victoria, Mary, and um, Nadia, a web-based journalist. And we've tried to put together um, a program of events. We're running Food Thinkers, which is a seminar. We've had Stephanie Barrientos, who's a British development socialist, or economist, actually. Um, Jane Dixon, an Australian, um, and a whole series. And those are being filmed and up on the web, and they're becoming actually very nice and very neat. We're also running um, our annual symposium, which is going to be in December, on December the 15th, uh, which is at City, um, uh, at the university, and is going to be on sustainable diets. You're all welcome to that. That's free. That's funded by another... Uh, foundation I got money from one of the city livery companies, a charity. Um, and we've got Olivia de Schutter, some of you will know the former UN rapporteur on Right to Food, who is now chairing the international panel, expert panel globally on sustainable diets. Uh, and Tim Benton, the British government's um, global food security advisor, and a whole s set of people to really ask the question. What is a sustainable diet, but why is Britain not eating it, and what could be done to deliver it? How can things move forward? We've got speakers from Germany, Sweden, Netherlands, to try and share that experience. But all to do what Stefan was saying, putting together academic and interdisciplinary, inter-university collaboration with civil society. And Stefan and I co-hosted at City, I'll say this and stop, at City, a meeting of nearly 30 um, big NGOs between these four worlds, from National Trust, RSPB, through to very small ones, and we, we listened for half a day. What did they want to hear? What did they want to know? One of the things that came out, to my, Stefan, to my intense pleasure, actually, was the subject of today. Where does the money go? Where's the labour process? This was bird groups wanting to know. They realise now. If you're interested in conservation, you've got to know why is the labour process going where it's going. Where does the money go? My set, my set statistic, which whenever I quote it, I used to get rude letters from government ministers saying you have no right to say this until I pointed out it was their statistic. Britain spends £196 billion a year on food and drink. Farming gets 9.2 of it. So it's 4.5% of the money that consumers spend goes to the farm. Where does that money go? You look at the salami slicing, the lengthening of the supply chain that's gone on, it's only possible because of the restructuring of work. And that's what today is about. So when Stefan said, let's do the first one on this, I thought that was fabulous. So it's fantastic. So 
well done, Stephanie. The team is really good.